Well, good morning, how are you? Very well, I trust. It's uh, cold and bright <coughs> this morning. And uh, I don't start till 10, so I'm sort of strolling it. I'm actually early. This is the key to being early, it's the start at 10 o'clock. Yeah, so it's a nice Friday, looking forward to the weekend. I thought I'd do an update on uh, something which is, again, it's not dental, so I'll post up a thing saying it's not a dental subject again. But what I'm going to talk about is uh, Bitcoin. And <clears throat> I said immediately, I mean, a lot of people won't want to hear about Bitcoin and think that they know everything about Bitcoin. And But uh, the... Uh, that Fusion organization has got a proud tradition with Bitcoin in that we, we started accepting Bitcoin uh, for membership a couple of years ago. Uh, not that anyone ever joined and paid in Bitcoin, but I mean, we were one of the very first uh, businesses, I would imagine, or charities, non-profit organizations to accept Bitcoin. And uh, we published a Bitcoin address on the website and everything. and. Um, there was an article in uh, the an early GDP uh, magazine or Fusion magazine on Bitcoin. I mean, very early, explaining all about it, how it worked, why it was a good idea, you know, why why you should get in. And uh, I think I mean I don't know what Bitcoin was probably about three and four hundred dollars at the time. And now, of course, it's gone up from ten through twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. At the time of recording, it's sixteen thousand dollars. So, and, and of course everyone's saying, oh, it's a bubble, blah, 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 blah. So I thought I'd sort of try and bring a bit of sanity to the debate, because you're not really going to get any sanity at all off the BBC or uh, any sort of uh, banker-sponsored <laughs> establishment, shill, news service, or like, you know, like the Times, for example. So all you're going to do is get repeated... Uh, advice to stay well clear you know don't buy what you don't understand blah 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 and uh, loads of quotes from people saying uh, you know it's not. Uh, th there's a sort of um there's a sort of a ladder of understanding that people go through with bitcoin and it starts off at uh, it's the money of uh, child pornographers and drug dealers it's used on the silk road it's used on the dark web that's sort of stage one and then stage two is uh, the government will ban it. You know, even if it's got some legal uses, the government will ban it. The government will never stand uh, the establishment of a private money outside of the government fiat. And it's, they'll crack down on it, you know? So there's no point buying any because it'll, it'll end up being worthless because the government will just, will ban it and the value of it will go to zero. And then the third stage is, uh, well, what gives it any value? You know, why, why is it worth anything? You know, it's basically, it's just bits, it's ones and zeros. It's, uh, you know, it's digital, and surely digital things can be created. Ad infinitum, that's the whole, I'm surely that's the whole point of digital, wasn't it? That's what we were told, you know, you can copy digital things without any loss of accuracy. And uh, as many times as you like, and, the, the, the Motion Pictures Association of America have spent millions trying to stop people copying digital things. So why on earth would I buy a digital uh, currency that's represented by a load of ones and zeros? And then once you get over the fact that it's a, it's a unique digital, you know, for the first time, this breakthrough in computer science means that we can have something which is both digital and unique. Um, you know, then, you, you know, and you've got over the fact, well, you know, why, why bother with Bitcoin? Oh, it's going to be supplanted by Bitcoin. I'm going to wait for Bitcoin 2.0 to come along. I'm going to wait. And anyway, why buy the Bitcoin's too expensive anyway? Let, why don't I buy Ethereum? And if uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum can exist, why not like, you know, Litecoin and Feathercoin and Dogecoin? And there's an endless number of coins. What's the, why are they going to, any one of them going to be worth anything when anyone at a whim can create another coin and there are there are at least a thousand coins listed on coinmarketcap.com so you know why buy any of them and so you have to get over that sort of 
uh, you know, someone has to explain to you that anyone could invent the internet. And they, they, there's no, there's nothing stopping someone inventing a second World Wide Web uh, or a second telephone system, <laughs> or, you know, or a second anything. It's it's all about first mover advantage and network effect. So then you've got to get your head around first mover advantage and, and network effect and the reason why people don't want uh, the, the you know some knockoff Bitcoin. They want Bitcoin, you know. They want the one that everyone else has got in the same way as if when you sign up to a phone system you want to get on the phone system that everyone else has got, don't you? Because otherwise you can't phone anyone. So anyway, so you go through all these stages of denial. Bitcoin and then and then hopefully at the end of it you have a sort of an aha moment you know you, you sort of you think oh yeah no I finally understand what it is you know another stage is a, the Ponzi scheme stage where you say well it's it's a Ponzi scheme but because basically you know the people who got in early are making a load of money and they're making a load of money because the people who got in later are buying and so the the people the later people are giving their money to the earlier people therefore it's a Ponzi scheme so you know leaving aside that ponzi scheme based basically based on dividends and dividends the early the early adopters get paid dividends out of the income from the later so that they still own them the first uh, early adopters still own their coins or their their ponzi's or whatever they are and the later ones also own ponzi's but the later ones pay the early ones and that's not the case with bitcoin you know if you're if you sell a bitcoin then to someone who comes along later at a higher price, then you don't have that Bitcoin anymore. That's it. It's just, it's like anything else. It's like selling a house. It's like selling gold. You, it's scarce and it's useful. It goes up in value and so you sell it and then you don't have it anymore. So that's why it's not a Ponzi scheme. But it's, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, 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 it's just a Ponzi scheme, you know. And, and a variation on the Ponzi scheme is what they call the greater fool theory, which is where you buy something that is is fundamentally worthless uh, in the hope that you can sell it to some other idiot, some bigger idiot, some greater fool, someone who you say, yeah, 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 oh, I paid, you know, I paid 500 pounds for this dog, you know, and uh, he's a very clever dog, you know, he knows the works of Shakespeare, hoping that someone will say, oh, well, I'll pay you 550 for it. Uh, and uh, and so you've made money by, by finding a greater fool. Now, and, and the problem with that, obviously, is that that only works, you know, if something's got no intrinsic value, then you need to find a greater fool. You've been a fool for buying it, and you need to find a greater fool to take it off your hands, don't you? It's a bit like buying a house that's got subsidence, and uh, you, you know, you, what you do, you plaster over the walls, don't you, and then put it back in an auction, hoping that someone's not going to do a structural survey, and it's going to take it off your hands. But that's, Bitcoin is not like that. It's not, it has intrinsic value. It's worth, uh, it's worth something. And that's the key to it all is what, why is it worth what it's worth? You know, why was it worth, you know, the original transaction as often quoted, Ladslow's original transaction, uh, 10,000 Bitcoin, I think, for two pizzas, uh, at a time when 10,000 Bitcoins was going for $41. Um, it's useful it's useful for the same reason that everything else is useful okay it's useful because it's I mean it's valuable it's valuable for the same reason that everything else is valuable because it's useful and it's scarce right it's useful and it's scarce that's why it's valuable anything that is useful and scarce is valuable okay so <clears throat> why is it useful right well with Bitcoin, it's, uh, Bitcoin is all about a centralized ledger. The breakthrough in computer science was the blockchain, and, and that's another, that, by the way, that's another level of deniability, you know, saying that, uh, oh, well, the, the uh, Bitcoin will never go anywhere, but the block, oh, the blockchain, yeah, but the, oh, yeah, the blockchain, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good, I reckon the blockchain will go far, you know, or lots of people will use the blockchain, but not Bitcoin, no, 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 no. So, and without sort of realizing or, or accepting that the blockchain doesn't work without Bitcoin, you know, it's, a, it's like a, a cog, uh, <laughs> a gear, without cogs would be a circle, wouldn't it? It'd be useless, wouldn't it? And that's what Bitcoin is to the blockchain. Bitcoin is the, is the cogs on the gear 
If they two of them go together, they're only useful when they're together. If they're not together, then you don't have a gearbox. You just have a load of spinning circles. And so for, to, uh, to have a public blockchain, then you need to have a publicly traded token, a native token. And that native token is the Bitcoin. And, and uh, uh, the, the very, very first use that comes to mind for a, a digitally unique, publicly traded token uh, is, is a money, as it is as a money, you know? So that's why Bitcoin uh, became a money and not, not you know, like a, a land registry uh, token and, you know, something that, you know, that keeps track of how many McDonald's you've every month. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so yeah, so this sort of, oh, well, you know, the Bitcoin is, is I'm not going to, Bitcoin's a bubble, but the blockchain's good. If you, the banking sector really was, um, you know, is, was stuck in the 50s. They were one of the first adopters of computers because uh, they wanted to modernize, the, you know, they needed to uh, have a lot of um, computer-based back-end, really, to do all the money and keep track of the accounts and everything. And so what they did was they were very, so they're relatively early into computers, which means that these days they are, they're running on systems which are pretty antiquated, you know, I mean, and by antiquated, I'm talking, you know, 70s and 80s based systems, and they're ripe for modernization. And the people who look at these things, you know, the Ubers and the Googles and the Amazons, the, the Jeff Bezos and all this, they're looking for industries which are antiquated, which are inefficient and out of date, you know, that are entrenched in their uh, in their way of doing things, where there's opportunities for streamlining, for modernization, economies of scale. And everyone's eyeing the banking sector, the financial sector, because it is a complete disaster. Uh, you know, and we wouldn't invent it this way now if we were doing it now. It's historically, it needed updating. And so what they do is they look at something like the blockchain and say, look, we need to update. So perhaps this, this blockchain thing might be the key. Centralized worldwide ledger, everybody contributes, it's immutable, you can't go back and rewrite history, so there's no uncertainty about who owns what, who owes what. You know, we, should, we could use this, it's got big applications in banking, and it does, in, and in finance and insurance and law and all sorts of things. I mean, who can't use an immutable blockchain? But um, the thing is that they are like, oh, well, we, we're not going to use a public blockchain that's going to have a publicly traded token, native token, like the Bitcoin blockchain. We're, we're just going to have our own little blockchain, our own, uh, you know, our own, like, Lloyds Bank blockchain, an HSBC, I'll have HSBC blockchain. And uh, it won't be immutable because uh, HSBC will have the keys. And so if they do want to rewrite a bit of history, they'll just say, oh, can you change last Thursday's closing balance, please? Here's the private keys. And uh, so, it's, you know, basically what that is, is a distributed database. It's just a SQL database. It's not a blockchain at all. And they, they don't, you know, they don't really understand the difference between, between a distributed database and a blockchain. They think the two are the same. So, um, so, uh, you know, and you've got people like Jamie Dimon, head of JP Morgan, saying that Bitcoin is a, is a bubble, you know, is a tulip, is a rerun of the tulip bubble of 1635 or whatever. And uh, it, that is just, you know, to compare, to compare, a, you know, the first private money, really, for 100 years <laughs> to a 500-year-old to a uh, blip in the price of tulips, you know, because everybody, they, they've worked it out to breed variegated tulips and so everybody, the price shot up and so everybody piled into the tulip market and then uh, <clears throat> it collapsed and everybody piled out again. You know, I mean, that was just a buying frenzy. Uh, and this is not a buying, this is not a buying frenzy. I mean, a tulip, you more or less know what the value of a tulip is. Even a nice variegated tulip is gonna be within a certain price range. How do you value <clears throat> A system that is where is capable of transferring value between any two people anywhere in the world at any time of the day or night for uh, practically free of charge and without any bank or government interference it's you know like a real uh, democratization of value you know um, how do you put a price on that and that's the thing 
<clears throat> you know, another one of the uh, the uh, things is it's um, it's volatile. Yeah, well, of course it's volatile. I mean, it's only been around since <laughs> it's only been around about five or seven years. I mean, think how think what the internet was like after five or seven years. You know, while well, HSBC, HSBC, and and these guys trying to do their own blockchains, they're a bit like AOL. Do you remember on CompuServe in the early days of the internet? They they said, oh yeah, you know, you don't want to worry about that public internet. Just come in our little walled garden internet. You know, we'll give you like a nice little at AOL email and. When you come on, you'll go straight into our website, and oh, it won't have anything. It won't have anything in there that we don't want in there. But you know, you'll be safe there. You'll be safe. And of course, people didn't. They don't want that. They want the the worldwide internet. They want the World Wide web, don't they? So no one's going to be interested in in any sort of uh, subset of uh, of the the financial value ecosystem. They're going to want to be able to transact. And uh, the ability to transact anytime, anywhere, with anyone in the world, uh, without asking permission of your bank and uh, or government, uh, for, for practically zero cost, is um, is a fantastic value proposition. How much is would that you know a unit of that currency be worth? Well, the currency with that, you know, <laughs> think of all these poor these poor Chinese people trying to get into Macau and Singapore and Hong Kong with two kilos of uh, gold stuffed up their bum. How what, do you think that they're not going to use a value, a currency that allows them to transfer any amount of money anywhere in the world with no capital controls uh, for, 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 for practically nothing? Of course they are. How much is that currency going to be worth? And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the birth of a new currency, the internet of money. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, and you have to sort of try and get your head around that, you know, and get get past the, the money box <laughs> analysis of Bitcoin, you know. Does stay well away. It's a bubble. It's it's got a pop. It's got a pop. You know, it's got a pop. <laughs> stand back. Stand well away. So move away from the Bitcoin. <laughs> so those of us who've got in reasonably early, you know, and have got some, uh, no, you know, we've been studying this stuff for years, and of course now it's only really just got out into the mainstream. So it's a Bitcoin is. Um, uh, what 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 bankers would call an exotic, a currency which is it's a new asset class <clears throat> for a start. It's it's a, it's both it's both a currency and a commodity. So <clears throat> the Americans have chosen to treat it like a commodity, like pork bellies and steel, and um, and charge capital gains tax on it. The UK, I'm hoping, are going to treat it more like a currency. And uh, like any early currency with a relatively small market cap. Uh, of, of uh, I don't know what it is now. It must be about 400 billion, I suppose. It's volatile. Uh, it's mainly volatile to the upside. So I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about the volatility. <laughs> the chances are you're going to inadvertently make a load of money rather than lose a load of money. But having said that, you know, it's like it's what on the on the foreign exchange markets they would call an exotic. It's not like the dollar or the pound, which is you know has got trillions and trillions and trillions around and and you can't move the price by more than 0.1 of a percent nobody you know on a day-to-day -day basis uh, bitcoin is wild it is wild it, and it's wild it's wildly roaring up at the moment because it's trying to find its 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 place in the world it's trying to find out what value people will place on this on the magic internet money and uh, so far people are saying yeah i think that'll be quite valuable and you know, because it's scarce, it's scarce and it's valuable, and the scarcity is a big is a big factor, because there are theoretically only ever 21 million bitcoins that can exist, of which just under 17 million have been produced, and probably four million have been lost. You know, in the early days, people were always like, "There's a guy who lost a, a few million in a, well, a Welsh uh, rubbish tip," and there's and and there's there's far more people who. Uh, uh, have lost their private keys, lost their passwords, thrown away old computers that had them on, and you know, forgot about it. Or people like me, I must have given Bitcoin to, I would give Bitcoin to all my nephews and nieces, and they've, oh, they've all thrown their phones away, you know, and, and they're all using different phones now. And I say to them, "What did you did? You did transfer the Bitcoin off, didn't you? Off the phone? No, no, I forgot about that. So that, that's lost as well. You know, it's all been reformatted." So it's it's as though um, 
can you imagine a world where there was only like 21 million emails and that uh, you know you had to you had to buy an email off of someone if you wanted to you'd send an email you had to buy one <laughs> you know you can send an email anywhere in the world but you'd have to buy it you'd have to buy one to do it otherwise you'd have to go back to using the post so <clears throat> yeah so i mean that's my sort of take on bitcoin i did all i'm saying is just don't be frightened of it all right and what i'll do is i'll probably put a link in the um i'll probably put a link in the notes below uh to the original article i'll separate it out as a pdf so you can read it i don't know whether it's still relevant but it actually gives you a lot of the basics as well and uh, if you want to get into it then uh, i'll put a link in the show notes as well so that you can at least if you want to sort of uh, participate there's uh, going to be a fantastic transfer of wealth really there's going to be this is such a because this this invention i'm not joking this invention is on a par with the invention of the steam engine the printing press and and the world wide web this is the this is the um the sort of the uh, democratization of uh, wealth and and value it's going to be a, a enable so much stuff it's going to disintermediate so many people it's going to disintermediate the banks it's going to disintermediate the governments it's going to um when when smart contracts come in based on the blockchain it's it's undeniable irreversible irrevocable distributed immutable truth is going to disintermediate the lawyers because you know you won't need a lawyer to tell you what the truth is you'll you know you'll just it, your computer will tell you because it'll look on the blockchain so um <clears throat> so uh, yeah so uh, be there or be square you know but um if anyone's got any questions on it then by all means do uh, ask you know i'm always happy always happy to answer any questions and and we, we're getting increasingly we get a lot of questions now about it so which is not surprising all right lovely nice to talk to you sorry it's not a good dental subject again but it's probably a bit more important than dentistry this subject uh, and i'll talk to you next week all right bye <laughs>